If you've been around my channel for a while, you might have noticed my fascination with the antagonist of the Zelda series, specifically the wise and cunning types. That's why I'm so intent on finding theories that spin the corpse in Breath of the Wild 2's teaser trailer into something more than a reanimated zombie of malice, or why when Age of Calamity was revealed, I started championing the idea of a new Yiga Master right away. So you can imagine my reaction when this new hooded figure took the spotlight in the most recent Age of Calamity trailer. Actually, you don't even have to imagine. <laughs> you want to get me excited? Show me a freaking cool looking villain like that. That's how you get me excited. And I'm sure the reaction was very similar for many of you. This reveal is exciting. Probably more exciting than anything else Age of Calamity has shown us thus far. Breath of the Wild never said anything about a hooded figure working with the Yiga Clan 100 years ago, so while almost everything we've seen in Age of Calamity trailers lines up with Breath of the Wild's outline in the past, this character doesn't. They operate outside of what we know about the story. A missing piece of the puzzle that could change how we look at the meaning of so many of Breath of the Wild's loose ends. I have no doubt the hooded figure is immensely important to the narrative of Age of Calamity and Breath of the Wild, maybe even Breath of the Wild too, but to know how, we need to know who. Identity is one of the biggest problems with this guy right now, because currently, they have many. Did you notice how there doesn't seem to be a consistent narrative on who this hooded figure is? There are many theories about this figure flying around everywhere, each with their own great points, and no matter what theory you subscribe to, there is currently no wrong choice. We know very little about this character, from the four shots they appeared in during the latest Untold Chronicles trailer, and even then, reading into those four scenes and the details hidden in them, you could easily take away several completely different conclusions to the character's identity, which is exactly what I want to get into. In this video, we'll be looking at several of the most popular theories on this figure's identity, and arguing the best case for each. On top of that, we'll also be going over the results directly from you guys. To gauge interest in the most popular theories, I opened a poll earlier last week asking viewers who they thought the hooded figure from Age of Calamity's newest trailer was and the results from 132 tallied were surprising. Also, shout out to that one person who wrote in Beetle. So as we go through each theory, I thought it would be fun to make it a bit of a countdown, going from least popular to most popular voted theories. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. Yuga. Now there's something that surprised me right off the bat. Yuga, the evil sorcerer from A Link Between Worlds, comes in at the lowest percentage of the vote, with just 1.5%. Which is odd to me because I actually see this figure being some new take on Yuga as one of the better theories I've seen. Why? Well, the appearance is no doubt the strongest factor in Yuga's favor. We might not see the new character in Age of Calamity carrying around a staff or wearing a long purple cape, but the red highlights around their eyes, the crown with a red gem in the middle, the skin complexion, and even the texture of their hair. As far as physical attributes go, these two share a whole lot in common. Plus, take this into account. When we finally get a close-up of this character's face at the end of the Untold Chronicles trailer, they only show the eyes and forehead. Why is that? Maybe because if you could see the character's mouth and the distinct blood red lining around it, well, who this mystery character is would then be all too obvious. Finally, don't you think it would be a little too perfect to have a secret leader of the Yiga clan called Yuga? Girahim. Next on the list is Girahim, also coming in at the very low vote count of just 2.3%. I'll be the first to say, Girahim was a fantastic villain in Skyward Sword, and takes the cake as my favorite Zelda villain along with Ganondorf. That said, however, there is very little evidence pointing to this figure being a new incarnation of the Servant of Demise. Appearance-wise, Girahim does fit this new character's complexion, and is one of the only characters to somewhat match their hair color. Another point in Girahim's favor is the fact that his twin blade Fi is present in Breath of the Wild, as a voice Zelda can hear in the Master Sword, meaning Girahim might also still be kicking, trying yet again to return to his master. But that's about where the evidence ends. In my opinion, Girahim is the least likely identity we will be looking into today, as much as it pains me to say that. However, with this being the first potential servant of Ganon since his establishment in the lore, I'm still hoping we'll see some connection back to Girahim. Zelda's Mother The next two theories actually tied, each with a still low 3% of the vote. 
The first of which is a fascinating theory that this evil hooded figure is actually Zelda's late mother. We don't know anything about what the late Queen of Hyrule looked like, or much of anything about her in general. But we do know we're set to learn more about her in Age of Calamity, going off what Treehouse reps said during the Treehouse Live gameplay presentation. Now, it might be a little far-fetched to say the dead Queen of Hyrule is actually a servant of Ganondorf working with the Yiga to do his bidding. I mean, I sound a little insane when I put it like that. But there are a few things lending credence to the idea. First of all, her clothing. This figure is wearing a cape with a Gerudo insignia, and a collar almost identical to the ones Urbosa and Riju wear. I can't imagine many people in the world have access to this kind of regal-looking Gerudo clothing, but maybe a close friend of the Gerudo chieftain may have been gifted some clothing throughout the years. Beyond that, there's a matter of how is Zelda's mother alive? Which, believe it or not, is actually one of the least tricky things to explain about this theory, since reanimating the dead isn't really off the table after Breath of the Wild 2's trailer. All in all, this is a really interesting theory that would be insane if true, and the malice eye on this figure's forehead doesn't rule out the idea of mind control. I love this theory, and I feel like it puts forth a lot of great points, but too many of the details just don't seem to add up for me to put a stake in it. Vati. Our second theory of the tie for 3% of the vote goes to Vati. Vati is the main antagonist of the Minish Cap, Four Swords, and Four Swords Adventures, and it just so happens that this figure's clothing evokes his to an extent. The dark bluish purple color, the hood, the crown and jewel, the short cape, and even the belt. While Yuga might have matched more facial features with this figure, Vati definitely looks the most similar as far as clothing and full design. And again, he does have the benefit of a very similar skin complexion, as well as hair color. But the most interesting part of the Vati theory is what it could mean for his race of origin, the Minish. Vati was originally a Minish before transforming into a human sorcerer, and it just so happens that at one point in Breath of the Wild's development, Minish were thought of as a possible inclusion. It's also a really interesting connection that one of the first Zelda games Breath of the Wild's director, Hidomaro Fujibayashi, worked on was the Minish Cap. Nintendo, and the Zelda team in particular, loved to reuse ideas, so there's a chance that if this really is Vati, maybe the Minish did live in Hyrule during this period of time, and might just show up in Age of Calamity, or even Breath of the Wild 2. Twin Rova. Next, with 3.8% of the votes, is Twin Rova, a very classic face in the Zelda series. When separated, Twin Rova, or Kome and Koteke, are two 400-year-old witches and elders of the Gerudo tribe that appeared in Ocarina of Time. So one of the main points in their favor for being this figure, of course, is the Gerudo sign on the back of the figure's cape, and again, the Gerudo collar around its neck. If this hooded figure is a person of Gerudo heritage, being a surrogate mother to the last Ganondorf of Breath of the Wild's age, most likely the corpse we see in Breath of the Wild 2's trailer is one of the best connections for a Gerudo-serving Ganon that I can think of. New Character Coming in at the second most popular theory, according to you guys, this is a new character, with 9.8% of the votes. And if we want to ground ourselves to the most realistic option on this list, I think this might just be it. When I say this is a new character, I mean that while this character might exhibit traits and physical properties similar to past villains in the Zelda series, they are a completely new character, with no direct connection to any past Zelda villain. Basically think what Zant and Girahim were to their respective games. Because as much as we've talked about the idea of old villains returning in new incarnations throughout the theories here today, Zelda's never really historically done that. Yuga, Girahim, Vati, Twinrova, all these villains are fully unique and have never been iterated on through reincarnation. That's a right that's been reserved for only Ganondorf and Ganon. So as cool as it would be to see what these characters look like if they popped up in the series again, I'm not sure it will happen. But even then, a new villain is still an exciting thought. After all, all these characters were once in the same position. Before we go on to the number one voted theory by you guys, it's time for some honorable mentions, because a lot of you actually wrote in your own ideas on the poll, 16% of the vote to be exact, and I really like a lot of them. Aghanim. We talked a lot about old Zelda villains that have been speculated to hold a connection to this character, but one we missed was a link to the past's Aghanim. Three people wrote him in as their theory, 
which I can't deny bringing back some new form of Aghanim would take this character in a very interesting direction. Aghanim was an undercover agent that after saving Hyrule from great misfortunes befalling the kingdom was hailed a hero and welcomed as a chief advisor to the king, only to stab him in the back and reveal his allegiances to Ganon. This storyline actually fits in quite well with theories of this character being a traitor, and is definitely an interesting parallel. Riju's mother. Three people were keen to also bring up Riju's mother as a possible identity for this figure, and while the ambiguity surrounding her death and the fact that this figure has a Gerudo crest and collar do give her some evidence, the timeline just doesn't work with Urbosa being alive and the current chief of the Gerudo. A male Gerudo. Two different voters brought up the possibility of this being one of the male Gerudo born every 100 years, which is a theory I really like. Some might be quick to point out that in creating the champion it states another male Gerudo has not been born since the Ganondorf that became Calamity Ganon, but who's to say that's just what the Gerudo wants Hyrule to think? What if males are still born to the Gerudo tribe every 100 years, but because of the history of Ganondorf, they are now feared, and disposed of before they can grow up and ever have a chance to become like him? From there, picking back up on what this voter said, what if one mother couldn't bear the thought of losing her child, and secretly hid away her son from Gerudo Town, only for him to be found and raised by the Yiga? One day this male Gerudo somehow finds the body of Ganondorf that became the Calamity, and learns of his place in this story, being a servant of Ganon's will. I bet you can all guess what's coming next, but the sheer amount of support for this theory in the poll really did catch me off guard. With a whopping 60.6% .6 of the vote, the fortune teller is by far the most popular theory as to this hooded figure's identity. Now why this is the case is rather interesting, but before we get to that, I just need to let you guys know, I called it, I don't mean to brag, but I called it two weeks before the trailer, I called it, I basically called out exactly what I'm about to tell you. So yeah, make sure you go watch that video after this one. <laughs> the fortune teller is a character mentioned scarcely through Breath of the Wild, but the implications of their actions on Hyrule are tremendous. See, the fortune teller is solely responsible for the excavation of the Guardians of Divine Beasts. The autonomous Sheikah weapons were buried long ago, after the first Great Calamity 10,000 years ago. This fortune teller, however, predicted the return of Calamity Ganon, and told of the power to oppose it, dormant beneath the ground. A pretty heroic sounding figure when you look at it all from that angle. But we know the rest of the story. Ganon decimated Hyrule by turning the ancient technology against the kingdom. So why didn't the fortune teller's prophecy also mention that? Well, what if it was all a ruse, and this prophetic savior of Hyrule is really the one setting the pieces in place for its fall? From unearthing the kingdom's most powerful weapons, only to corrupt them, to maybe even the death of the last person capable of accessing the goddess's sealing power to stop Ganon. This is the theory of the fortune teller's true intentions, and now many turn to this mysterious figure with the thought, could this be the fortune teller? And well, it's very possible, if not anywhere near confirmed. This figure has no evidence immediately linking them to the fortune teller, other than the fortune teller being one of the last important characters mentioned in Breath of the Wild that is yet to show up in Age of Calamity. I feel personally like a lot of the support for this theory just comes from how great a narrative twist it would be. Being honest with you, that's the main reason I subscribe to this theory as well. That and the fact that I called it, but, but, but even though I feel like a lot of the support comes from wanting to wish this outcome into existence, there is one piece of evidence here that actually does link this hooded figure to potentially being our fortune teller, the orb they carry. This object might already look familiar to a lot of you. I mean, it is an object you can obtain in Breath of the Wild, a giant ancient core. Although, as you can see upon a glance, this isn't any old ancient core. It is tainted with a dark pink glow of malice. Now call me crazy, but walking around with a corrupted piece of Sheikah technology before the events of the Great Calamity is more than a little suspicious, and brings up the question of can this person control Ganon's malice, as well as if they might have played a role in corrupting the Sheikah technology on Calamity Ganon's return. A plan that would have to rely on the tech already being excavated. To even think that such a plot could be hidden underneath the surface of Breath of the Wild's plot is such an interesting and exciting theory. And it's not hard to see why so many people would love to hold on to this as the most popular theory for this hooded figure's identity. Hey, 
Hey, how's it going everybody? I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a good one, hopefully, right? Hopefully. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe. It really, really, really helps me out. You get to see new videos when they come out. I get to see that we're growing and it's good and I can keep making videos. And you know, it's just a total win-win situation. So I'd, I'd love to have you on here. Uh, join us as Age of Calamity just gets so close, so close. Aside from all that, if you want to get engaged in the community even more, I have a Twitter, you can follow me there. We have a Discord server, everyone's over there, it's a great time. And we stream every Friday over on Twitch, so you can check all those out with the links in the description. Also, while you're here, if you like the video, that would be great. For some reason, YouTube likes to share videos when people like them. I don't understand the mentality, you know. But um, you can also share it yourself if you want, with your friends, something like that. I don't know. It'd be great. I'm not stopping you. I'd love to see it. Anyway, thank you. I'm rambling on it. There's no script to this outro, actually. But I've just been making it up as I go. But, uh, yeah, I'm tired of talking, so I'm going to let you guys go. Have an amazing day. Wonderful, great, fantastic 10 out of 10, 100% day. And uh, I'll see you soon with more videos. See you then, guys. Bye.